I'm so excited I get? Yeah, okay. <laughs> This is the Schmo with the pro with an OG in the fight game, the godfather of the UFC lightweight division, Lil Evil, Mr. Jens Pulver in the flesh, Las Vegas, Nevada, UFC Hall of Fame weekend, International Fight Week. How we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. I finally get to rap with you. I didn't know if this was ever going to happen. I figured like I already retired. I had this career and then all of a sudden the Schmo comes popping up afterwards and I was like, I remember the first time hearing him like, is he for real? And then the more I listen, I'm like, I like this guy. I like this guy a lot, so I'm glad to be here. I'm glad. I finally, I think I've, like, I've made it. Right. Hey, the Schmo's made it long overdue. I mean, the Schmo's very excited to interview you. We've had this pandemic in the way, other situations, but fate brought us here today. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. I think it works out. I mean, this is an incredible week. This is also one of the things that most people don't know why I'm out here is my 13th wedding anniversary on the 4th of July. So, yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank you. 13 years strong yeah. and continuing on. Now talk to the Schmo for a second. We're going to get to the Twitch stuff momentarily, but let's talk about the lightweight division. Everyone likes to talk about the greatest of all time. In your eyes, when did Habib Nurmagomedov surpass BJ Penn as the greatest lightweight in UFC history? You know, I don't, I don't know. One of the things when everybody always talks about the greatest of all time, I think the biggest thing is the sport's not old enough yet. And I mean, we have phenomenal fighters who have incredible careers. But when we start getting into that GOAT conversation, I wish we could get maybe, you know, 35, 40 years down the road and things like that. But he has had an incredible career. But what BJ did back in the day, two weight classes, winning titles, who he beat, how he did it, you know, that's second to none in that aspect. But to go undefeated in this game, in this day and age with as many fights there is, that again, incredible so I don't gosh you get into that goat talk and I, I've always been the one like I everybody they, we've had goat ish careers and Khabib is 100% had one BJ Penn 100% had a goatish career certainly have so the schmo gets the sense you don't want to choose between the two of those guys yeah there's no reason to choose I think it's just two different fighters all together and like, again when you think about the career of BJ Penn it's man we go way back I mean he and I fought first ever like especially when it comes to 105 155 pound division we we're the first ever main event that wasn't a heavyweight you know in UFC 35 man I start putting numbers I feel old but you know I mean then you look at the things that could Khabib did in the time that he did do it. The sport now has just gotten so big. It's, ah, it's second to none. It's incredible. So, again, when it comes to their careers, I can't compare the two because what they did was incredible in both of them. So it's not that I'm not I'm not picking sides. I'm, I'm, they both are incredible. Certainly, and you fought in multiple weight classes like BJ Penn. Someone you fought, Cub Swanson, his fight against Don Ho Choi, it's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. When you reflect against Cub Swanson, how proud of you of that man right now for his induction to the Hall of Fame. You know, again, congratulations. One of the fights that we watch all the time on Twitch, you know, twitch.com slash UFC, that's one of the fights that we watch, I mean, we've watched it probably five or six times, and it's, it's incredible. And I think one of the best things about it is to see the career that Cub has had. I remember seeing him today, went up, gave him a hug, and you know, and just a high five, took a picture with him and stuff. You know I mean? I, I asked him for the photo, but his, his career has been incredible. And I think that's one of the things is when you sit back and realize now that I've been retired, Man, it's been eight years or however long it's been. It's just, you know, just to watch these kids fight the way that, where they came from and where they're finishing. It's, I mean, his career is unbelievable. Certainly. Now let's talk about Twitch. Who would you say is the most active fighter on Twitch that's got, you know, the best resume right there for the UFC representing UFC on Twitch? I'm going to say that's Little Evil. 100% Little Evil. And let's I'll take you yourself why. out of the, the okay. equation for a second. So who has who is the best stream on Twitch in the fighting world? Ha oh, man, because you got Sugar. Don't you can't put me in there like that. We got the Sugar Show. We got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I know has been on there. Adrian Yanez has been on there. So, and there's more names that I got. I keep getting into, but I don't know all of them because I think it's new. So the ones that are branching out and doing Twitch, and if they're playing their video games and keeping that part, you know, doing what they love on Twitch, I don't know who the best is but i think when it comes to the front runner we got the ufc on twitch that to me is that's number one all right now tell the schmo why you're number one i'm number one because i got the twitch.tv slash ufc stream the the official ufc stream and what makes it number one is again on mondays we are watching the w we're breaking down the fights that happened on saturday we'll do highlights of things that we get from twitch the twitch clips and stuff like that things on twitter and then we do interviews so now i'm in there interviewing some of the fighters that fought on saturday wednesday we do a WEC wednesday to old school wec and then we watch fights again fans can come in
in and they can they can pick they can use channel points to pick the, their favorite fights we'll watch that friday we're watching fights of fighters fighting and saturday's fights so we'll do about two fights of each fighter so we're always showing fights 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 saturday i'll be commentating the fights doing the watch along if it's a pay-per-view we usually will have one or two guests so it's just a lot of talking a lot of fights and it's for me, for somebody who had to retire, to come back now and this has been it, heaven sent to me. I literally didn't feel like I had any value, didn't have any worth. And when I had to retire from fighting, I just got bulbous, we'll leave it as. And I just, I was heartbroken. But to be able to come back and do something like this and have this platform, uh, the UFC, it's, it's life-saving to me. It's been incredible to sit here and break down these fights and do things like that. And it's and now we, it, it, I'm involved 100% with the fighters, watching what they've got coming up, breaking down the fights every weekend and stuff like that. Yeah, the UFC stream has been it's perfect. You brought up Sugar Sean O'Malley, man. Do you believe that he's got what it takes to be champion in bantamweight division? Someone who's got that wrestling background like yourself and all the different striking backgrounds that you've seen over the years. You know, the one thing I like about Sugar is his belief. And if anything, that's the one thing. And he backs it up, but he has the belief. And that's hard to have when you have somebody out there. I'm not talking about a cock. It's almost that brash cockiness, but he knows he can back it up. So I love his style. I love his smile. I love the way he does it out there. I love his fighting, man. He's he's something. And he's also been a wild Watch along partner. So that's family to me. If you've done a Twitch watch along with me, you're family every time. As an OG in the fight game, you're four and in your boxing career. What do you make of these current fighters? The guys like Francis Naganu that want to transition into boxing. We've seen Tyron Woodley. We've seen Ben Askren. We've seen Conor McGregor. What do you make of MMA fighters wanting to box? You know, that's the beautiful thing now in this day and age. If you have the platform, that's the beautiful thing about social media. You can pop out there and you've got these fighters going out on YouTube and creating numbers that even the biggest promotions can't do if you've got the backing i love it these exhibition fights why not jump in have fun i mean getting to see tyson come out there who didn't get nostalgic watching tyson fight again of course he's not 23 years old who cares man it's tyson i got to watch him go out there and put on gloves and then you see jake paul I, it's like it's like a bad name in the MMA community, right? <laughs> Everything Jake Paul, Jake Paul, but everybody's always asking. But look at what he has done for his platform. Look at what he has created out there. Just it's unbelievable. Like you said, you got people like France and Ghana who's like, I want some of this YouTube money. I want some of this. I want to do these exhibition fights again. Tyron Woodley doing the same thing. To me, is if you have the if you have the draw and you can create the fights again, why not have fun with it? That's the beauty of social media. Well, speaking of someone with the draw, what's the situation going on with the UFC? and Nate Diaz. Who do you want to see Nate Diaz fight next? Because he's been linked to a boxing match with the guy you just mentioned, Jake Paul, when he gets out of his UFC contract. You know, and that's one thing when it comes to Nate, Nate has got to that point where Nate should be able to have a big say in what Nate does because he's he's a massive draw. He's a big entity. And if he wants to fight, you know what I mean? I don't know what he wants to do. I know he wants to fight soon and he kind of over here, the let me out of my contract, fight me or let me out, you know, and if he's got this Jake Paul fight, if that can do. But see, even if, imagine this, even if there wasn't a Jake Paul, Nathan, all you got to do at some point, you can do your own YouTube fights. It's, it's Nate Diaz. Who's not going to watch it? He could become, he could do his own Jake, damn it, Jake. Paul, go get somebody else that you always wanted to box. They could set it up and have some fun. Yeah, but he's got one more fight left, and he can't get out of this contract until he fights. Who's he going to be fighting next? Well, whoever the promotion tells him, but let's get him his fight because he wants his damn fight, right? That's right. Let's make it happen. <laughs> let's Quick, make it happen. Can we get a final message for all the Lil Evil fans out there worldwide? Number one, man, love and appreciation to each and every one of you. Make sure you tune in 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Twitch.tv slash UFC. Hang out with me. We're watching all the fights of fighters fighting, and it's a beautiful thing. We got all, I mean, just jump in. You have channel points. Hang out with me. Watch fights, and you can just pick the fights you want to see. Jens Pulver is taking over Las Vegas physically and in the metaverse. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Las Vegas, Nevada. We're out. Good. Good. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Y'all